Let's say you need to combine data from multiple sheets that are all in the same workbook and you want to do this dynamically. So whenever a new sheet is added to that workbook, you want your data to refresh automatically with just the click of a button. This is really easy to perform with Power Query. Here we have sales data for three months, May, June and July 21. If we look at the May tab, we have our columns showing sales rep, sales order number, status, product, sales value, customer first name, customer last name, and order date. June has the exact same column headers, and so does July. It's important to note that to combine, or rather append, this data successfully in Power Query, all the column headers in each sheet must be the same in spelling and lettercase. The order of the columns does not matter, because it's the column headers that are matched. Next, you need to ensure that your data is in a table format. If it's not, then place your cursor anywhere on your data and press Ctrl T to convert your data to a table, and the data is formatted to a table. I've done the same for June and July. Next, you want to rename your tables. On your ribbon, click on Table Design. If your data is not in a table format, then this option would not appear here. In the Table Name box, let's rename this to the month name of the sheet. So this will be May underscore 21. And I've renamed June and July in the same way. Now we're going to import this data into Power Query. To access Power Query, on your ribbon, click on Data. Then here in the Get and Transform Data grouping is where you can access Power Query. If you're new to Power Query and you would like to learn how to navigate the interface and learn more steps to transform and clean up your data, then check out this Power Query beginner video right here. Let's click on Get Data, go down to From Other Sources and click on Blank Query. This takes you into the Power Query Editor. If it's your first time seeing this view, please don't be intimidated. It's super easy to use. At the top here is your ribbon, just like in Excel. On the left here are the queries that Power Query is going to generate for us. And on the right here is Query Settings, showing properties and applied steps. Properties shows our query name, which is Query 1. And if we look on the left, it shows the exact same name, which is Query 1. The applied steps are extremely important, as this is where Power Query performs all the steps to transform your data. This is really useful, especially if you need to refer back to the steps that you performed, and for Power Query to automate the steps for any future data that you add to this workbook. Now, in the formula bar, type equals excel.currentworkbook. And you see that Power Query brings it up. Select that and hit enter. This function returns all the tables in the current workbook. The content column contains a full Excel table for each row, and the name column contains the name of each Excel table. If you click on one of the tables, you will see a preview of the data down here. Now, the first step we want to perform on our data is to ensure that we combine the correct data that's added to the current workbook. Remember we named our tables and added the underscore 21. So we only want data that ends with the underscore 21 to be in our query. In the name column, click on this down arrow, select text filters, select ends with, and type underscore 21. So now we've ensured the correct data will be appended in our query. And if we look at our applied steps on the right, you can see the filtered rows step. As we have the months in our data, we don't need the name column. So let's select the content column, right click, and select remove other columns. Now to append the Excel tables into a single proper data set, click the expand button in the content column. After clicking the expand button, uncheck use original column name as prefix, and we can see that Power Query has appended all our tables into a single dataset. Let's perform some basic data cleanup. In our sales rep column, we want to split the sales rep number and name. So click on the sales rep column, right click, go down to split column, 
click on by delimiter. The split column by delimiter dialog box pops up. Our delimiter is the space. We can keep each occurrence of the delimiter selected. Click OK and Power Query has split our column into two. Let's remove the two in this column and click on the Cells Rep 1 column to select it and right click and click on Remove. Now let's change the format in order date to a date format. And we have our date correctly formatted. If Power Query returns errors on your date, then be sure to check out this video here. How to fix Power Query date errors. The link is in the description also. Now let's get the month name from the order date column. Select order date. On your ribbon, in the add column tab, click on date, go down to month and click on name of month and Power Query has returned all our month names. So now we have all our steps recorded here. So when a new table is added to the current workbook, we just have to hit refresh and all these data cleanup steps will be automated to transform and append the data for us. Now let's send this back to Excel. In the Home tab, select Close and Load, Close and Load to, and I want this in a pivot table form, so I'm going to select Pivot Table Report. And now we're back in Excel, and if we look down here, Power Query named this tab Query 1, which is the name of our query. In our pivot table, we want to see cells by month for each sales rep. So let's drag sales rep to rows, month name to columns, and sales value to the values area, and we have our pivot table. If you need to go back to your query, in the Data tab, select Queries and Connections, and this Queries and Connections pane opens up on the right. And here is our Query 1. Double click on that and you're back in the Power Query Editor. Now let's quickly create a little dashboard for us. Let's create a pivot chart first. On the Insert tab, click on Pivot Chart and let's select a bar graph. Click on OK. Let's quickly format this. Let's add data labels and remove the grid lines and legend. Right click on one of the field buttons and select hide all field buttons on chart. Let's remove this axis as we have data labels. Let's resize this chart and insert a slicer. We want it by month name. Click OK. In the slicer tab, let's make this four columns and resize the slicer. In Slicer Settings, let's uncheck Display Header and select OK and Month Name is removed, as it's self-explanatory that these are our months. Let's rename our chart title to Cells and bold that and move it to the left of our chart. Let's give our chart a border. Let's right-click on one of the values in our pivot table and sort our values largest to smallest. Then on your pivot chart, click on the axis so that you get your format axis pane on the right here and click on categories in reverse order. So now when you click on one of your months on your slicer, your chart always shows your top salesperson for each month. So now we have a nice little dashboard here. Now let's see how the automation works when we bring in the August 21 data into this workbook. Let's convert the data to a table by using Ctrl T and remember to check my data has headers. Then extremely important is to rename our table. So this will be org underscore 21. Remember our query only appends data with the ending underscore 21. Now let's go back to our pivot table report in the query 1 tab. Right click on the pivot table, click on refresh. And instantly, the pivot table is automatically updated with August data. We can see that the number of rows in our Queries and Connections tab has increased by the number of rows for August. And if we double click on Query 1 to get back to Power Query and scroll to Month Name, we can see that August has been appended successfully into this query. And if we work through our little dashboard, you can see your top salesperson for each month from May to August. And if you want to see who the overall top salesperson was for this period, just click on May, hold down the Shift key and click on August. And all your months are selected. And you can see that Ronnie was the overall top salesperson for those four months.
Now that your reporting is sorted, you may need to make some plans for the rest of your day. But if you want to maybe delay those plans just for a few minutes, I'll quickly show you how to insert a refresh button on your dashboard so that you just have to hit that button for your pivot table and pivot chart to automatically refresh instead of you right clicking on the pivot table and then hitting refresh. We're going to record a macro for this. First, let's add our button in the developer tab. If you don't have the developer tab, just right click anywhere on your ribbon and select customize the ribbon. Then on the right here, under main tabs, check developer and click OK. Now let's click on insert and click on the button you want. Then drag the button to the size you want and this prompt comes up. Let's name this macro to refresh all and click on OK and let's type in refresh. Let's format that. I'm going to bold it and make the text blue. Now we're going to record our refresh macro. In the data tab, click on queries and connections so that the queries and connections pane appears on the right. Now to record your macro, you can either go back to the developer tab and click on record macro or you can click on this little record macro at the bottom left here. I'll name it refresh all and click on OK. And now our macro is recording. On the queries and connections pane, let's click on this refresh icon. And now let's stop recording our macro by clicking on the macro icon on the bottom left again. Then right click on the refresh button we created and click on assign macro. Let's click on refresh all macro and click OK. So now let's bring in September data into this workbook. Let's hit our refresh button and you can see our slicer is updated with September. And if we hit September, our little dashboard automatically updates. And we can instantly see Sarah was our top salesperson for that month. And if we look on the right here at our queries and connections pane, our number of rows have increased by the number of rows for our September data. And remember to save your workbook as a macro enabled workbook. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you would like to check out more Power Query videos, please be sure to watch these videos here.